this is a short block, so we want to get to a, a a good story that won't take thirty minutes. And I think we found it in the dead spin attack attempt to ruin the life of a young boy who wore to a football game starring the Kansas City Chiefs, um, half of his face black, half of his face red, and with a Native American like headdress on. And the Deadspin writer, Karen, C-A-R-R-O-N-J Phillips, described as a black male senior writer for Deadspin, lost his ever-loving mind on this kid and on the NFL. Just a couple of samples because all Karen saw in the original picture was the black half of the kid's painted face um, and went off. It takes a lot to disrespect two groups of people at once. But on Sunday afternoon in Las Vegas, a Kansas City Chiefs fan, neglecting to point out at this point so far that it's a young child, found a way to hate black people and the Native Americans at the same time. The images of a Chiefs fan in blackface wearing a Native headdress during a road game leads to so many unanswered questions. Why did the camera person give this fan the attention? Where are we mentioning that it's a child? Nowhere yet. Why did the producer allow that camera angle to be aired at all? And then we get to it. Is that fan a kid slash teenager or a young adult? Despite their age, who taught that person what they were wearing was appropriate? The answers to all these questions lead back to the NFL. While it isn't the league's responsibility to stop racism and hate from being taught in the home, they're a league that has relentlessly participated in prejudice. If the NFL had outlawed the chop at Chiefs games and had been more aggressive in changing the team's name, then we would not be here. There is no place for a franchise to be called the Chiefs in a league that's already eradicated Redskins. This is what happens when you ban books, stand against critical race theory, and try to erase centuries of hate. You give future generations the ammo they need to evolve and recreate racism better <laughs> than before. And by the way, I don't know how this fits in, what? but he adds, better? it's also cruel to expect the oppressed to assist their oppressors in the termination of their yeah. own oppression. So when wow, it came out- so tired. I know, it's, so, it's exhausting. <laughs> when it came out that it was a kid wearing, I don't, the Chiefs colors are red and yellow, I think. I'm not sure how the black plays in, but half black, half red face, like we see at a lot of these sporting events. Half black, half, whatever, half black, half red. Um, he doubled down. For the idiots in my mentions who are treating this as some harmless act because the other side of his face was painted red, I could make the argument that that makes it even worse. Y'all yes. are the ones who hate <laughs> Mexicans, but wear sombreros on Cinco. So what? <laughs> what? What? This is. Wait, go nice. away. Can you re reread the sombreros thing what? slowly? <laughs> Let's get that. Okay. Y'all are the ones who hate Mexicans, no. but wear sombreros on Cinco. I don't what know how that. Even what is that? Is it time? I'll have you know yeah. that Camille yeah. Foster wore a sombrero on the Cinco de Mayo <laughs> on air on the I Fox did. Business nice. Network. That's true. While Good for you. had Good drinking for you. on Yeah. On, on I think air. I was actually eating you. guacamole, if, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Did all of those Throwing things. a taco, you're yeah. good to go. Margarita. Yeah. Um, I know. So I, I, what are they I what about the say, attempt to ruin this young boy's life? And blame it all on the NFL too. Oh, it's let's do more. Let's do more ruining of kids' lives because after Covington, we just haven't had enough uh, <laughs> recently. Um, I do want to say that as uh, somebody, Megan, you can sympathize uh, with this, who has had to experience this for a very long time as an Irish American and having to see uh, the Notre Dame <laughs> fighting Irish mm -hmm. make our people look like drunken street brawlers <laughs> that we definitely are not, nope. and which I've never seen an Irish person get into a fight. They're usually doing never. mathematics or winning <laughs> Nobel Prizes and not Spelling definitely these. not getting wasted and fighting people. But I think as an Irish American who has gone through this to the football team with a picture, or actually I'm from Boston, the Boston Celtics is an Irishman with a pipe in his mouth and his fists up ready to fight. Oh. That's the well, that's every time you pick up a, a box of lucky yeah. charms that those wounds don't heal. That's a box of racism. Megan. <laughs> and if you want to eat racism for breakfast, I'm sure you're feeding it to your kids to make them racist <laughs> against their own people. You know, my culture is not Megan Kelly's costume. OK, and I think you should show that. These fucking people, unbelievable. I can't even, I like it's, do you know you get those stories where you don't even know what to say anymore? You're like, I just yes. can't even believe they're real. No, it's outrageous, but you know this kid's life this. is ruined right now. You know this kid, he's a real kid, he's going to school 
And, you know, his teachers are looking at him and his classmates are like, oh, oh, you know, and the kid's like, oh my God, I'm all over the papers. This is racist. I hate so many people. I hate blacks and I hate Native Americans, I guess. And that somehow some Mexicans? on Cinco come into a <laughs> well, race of Mex- maybe Mexicans. It's, maybe it's not ruined. Uh, uh, maybe the silver lining in this is that it's dead spin. And who knew that dead spin is still alive? Uh, and if you're still alive. And if you even call that alive, that terrible, terrible writing, uh, maybe we've moved on from that, uh, Camille. Uh, maybe we finally were taking the Camillist route of this. And he says that as a Redskins hater from way back, but not necessarily the name. But like... It, it is so transparently stupid. If you ask an average normal American of whether this kid should be crucified, they'd be like, what are you even talking about? Mm-hmm. And when is Deadspin really going to go bankrupt this time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's okay, we lost Camille's feed for right now. We'll get it back in the commercial break. But yeah, um, the, the this is the same guy, by the way, this writer, Karen, C-A-R-R-O-N. Um, a thing, courtesy of Lives of TikTok that unearthed this t- old 2016 tweet. This is what he tweeted on March 6th of sixteen. I'm from Saginaw, spent a lot of time in Flint. This is Michigan, of course. I've never seen this many white people in Flint in my life. It's concerning, okay? It's concerning. What? So he's concerned about all the whites he saw in Flint, Michigan, um, he is because he Karen, really cares about he? racial sensitivity, I guess. I don't, I'm not really <laughs> totally following Camille. He's back. But what do you make know. of Karen? I, I have no idea what to make of someone who is is disconcerted when they see people of a different race in their in their general vicinity. I, I think we used to have a word for that sort of thing, maybe mm-hmm. racist. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it probably applies here. I don't like I don't like seeing people who don't look like me in my area, my general vicinity. Hey, you're a right. racist. You should do That's something so about that. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. The Browns. Only a, a matter of time. <laughs> They're going to. Yes. Oh, wow. I never right? thought about that. Yeah. You know Chiefs why? Are going. I'm not racist. <laughs> Browns are going. How about my people? The Syracuse Orange. The Orange. They got to go. They, they try to play uh, themselves off uh, like they're a little fruit. We know what you're implying. Orange. Oh. Orange face. It's just a matter oh. of time. You heard it here first. Is Stand by. Quick break. Dutch? Negative dings on credit reports happen to all sorts of people from all socioeconomic backgrounds. Understanding the credit landscape can be extremely difficult, very difficult and unpleasant. Spending the time to dispute and repair these so-called dings can be a full-time job too. Good luck to you if you already have one of those or kids or anything else going on. For starters, you're going to have to deal with the three separate credit bureaus, and that in and of itself is a massive headache. It's also a common misconception that people with poor credit scores are just those who simply don't pay their bills. These can be very hardworking people who are negatively affected by divorce, identity theft, medical debt, student loans. I've been there, that happened to me, uh, and don't have the time or are too overwhelmed to fix it. But if you do not address negative credit items, they can haunt you for years to come and when it counts the most, like when you're trying to get a mortgage at a competitive rate. Well, the good news is that our sponsor, Lexington Law, wants to help you. Go to lexingtonlaw.com, start today with a free consultation and review and tell them Megan sent you at lexingtonlaw.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.